Welcome to the 2021 virtual edition of the Internship Showcase. Um, we're all really happy that you've joined us. Um, I'm Kristen Stanton. I am a career consultant in the Career and Professional Development Center, and I work specifically with Dietrich College students. And I'm going to be moderating the panel today. Anne Marie? Yeah, so I just want to say hello. I am uh, Kristen's colleague. My name is Anne Marie DeGeorge. I am also a career consultant, and I work primarily with students from the schools of music and drama and the Mellon College of Science. Right, and so if you're here today, I'm sure that you are interested in learning more about internships. And really that's, um, you know, the purpose of this internship showcase is really just that, it's twofold. One to explore various job functions, industries, and career opportunities. Um, in this particular panel, um, those opportunities are in the fields of design and communications. Um, and then two, to learn how to get an internship in your area of interest from submitting your application to actually getting the offer. And so our panelists today were selected and invited by the CPDC to share their internship experiences as well as their efforts and their strategies for obtaining them. So without further ado, I would like to now introduce our wonderful panelists. Um, we'll start with Patricia. Patricia Yu, she was a product and experience design intern at Hasbro. Also joining us today is Karina Chu. Karina was a marketing analytics intern with Seagate Technology and also did some work over the summer for Olson Zaltman. Um, we also have Danny Delgado. Danny was a structural packaging designer with Bose. And then last but not least, we have Roshni Nishal, who was a program assistant with Global Wordsmiths. So the format of our, um, of our event today is that we're going to have each panelist give a really brief like three to five minute presentation on their experience um, and what their role entailed. And then we're gonna have a Q&A at the end of all of the presentations. So please do feel free to ask questions as they come to you when you're listening to the presentations, but please put them in the chat and that way um, we won't miss them and we'll be able to um, be sure to ask them of our panelists at the end of the presentation. Um, also, please make sure that your videos are turned off unless of course you're a panelist um, and that your mic is muted. Um, again, if you have questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat and we will be sure to get to those. All right, so let's go ahead and start our presentations. Um, Danny's going to kick us off. All right, Danny, I'll turn it over to you. Sounds good. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Danny Delgado and I'm a fourth year design major with a products focus. Um, so I personally, my version of products in recent years, product design can be both digital or physical product design. And I'm personally more into the physical interfaces that have to do with product design. So all of those different interactions. Um, and so that led me to looking at more physical design internships and I landed a structural packaging design internship at Bose. So just a little bit about Bose as a company and why I was interested in applying. It's, um, an, audio, it's an audio company and I was working through the consumer electronics branch. There's other branches that you could potentially internship at, such as the professional branch, which does speakers and speaker systems for restaurants and stadiums, and the audio and the auto section in the department, which does speakers for cars. But the consumer electronic branch, specifically working within product and communications design within this branch, are the people that do uh, like the noise canceling headphones, different portable speakers and so on and so forth. Bose as a company is really awesome because they're taking product design and all of these consumer electronics are really focusing on how audio and that sense of your auditory sense can help improve your life. And so they've been exploring a lot of different um, sleep, sleep apparatuses, noise canceling apparatuses and helping you focus on work better. Um, and also this company has a huge emphasis on internships and co-ops due to its close university ties. So there are any number of internships 
like they in any position on the company that is there you could probably find an internship for it so it's really exciting especially from the communications and design side so if you could go to the next slide um, talking a little bit more about what I did in my internship. My internship was divided up 50-50, roughly. 50% um, of it was doing real program work, so working on the packaging that gets, um, that is going to be seen in the next few years. Actually, in the little, I included a little picture of the earbuds. I did the final packaging details and design manufacturing specs for the packaging of those buds that just were released about a month ago, which was super exciting to be on the tail end on one of those projects and then see your work in an actual package get translated. And then they put a huge emphasis on giving you an actual job to do. So you're not just doing like formatting or kind of busy work that the higher ups don't want to do. They, my first individual assignment was to actually design an entire package for one of their repurposed products. And that design is getting sent out to manufacturing right now, which is awesome. So if you get repurposed headphones, I designed that package. Um, and yeah, so within these actual program teams, you get to work with engineers, with other different designers, people from a variety of different levels. And they put a huge emphasis on having your interns get to know the rest of the company. So there was a coffee chat system, which is how they um, normally you would get lunches with your managers, with the department heads, project heads, but because we went to translate into a virtual, you could just reach out to anyone in the company and say, hey, I saw that you were free at this time. Can you get a virtual coffee with me? And you just chat with everyone and they were super open. And so I made a lot of great connections through that type of system. Um, next slide, awesome. And then the other 15%, 50% of my internship was working on my own intern project, which was, a, they gave me the prompt, what's the future of packaging at Bose? and give us your response to that. And so I developed a different scalable packaging system um, in between that working on actual program work that I pitched to them and I pitched to a large audience, including project leaders, department heads, and just spoke about everything that I had done in this different complete system that I have designed for one of their new products that was be released. and. Um, you act your internship projects while they won't actually be produce this specific system they do take ideas and start to iterate upon the ideas that you present as a company so you do your work does have an impact in the future of what they the company's trajectory is so that's also really exciting um and then final slide yes yeah, so just a few tips about when you want to intern at like specifically either at Bose, but just in general internship tips. What really I think got me this internship was my different levels of interviews. To get into Bose, you have to do, at least I had three levels of interviews. And with each interview, I did enough research. So that way it was more of a conversation, less of a, they asked me questions, I gave them an answer and then waited. Um, I did enough research to be able to weave in my own questions throughout the in interview and then it was more of a, a back and forth where they got to see my personality a bit more rather than just a standard question answer format interview and I think that that's a really engaging way so that they can get to know both your work and yourself and also always be able to show your passion so what people will actually resonate with might not be the actual work that you think they will resonate with. Part of what I, I got this position as a packaging intern was because of my work in fashion, where I could make a pattern and then turn a pattern into a 3D form. And they were very interested in that skill, which for me, I didn't even think that I would get an industrial design position because I knew how to sew. So definitely whatever you're interested in, just pop it in there, be able, like, just weave it in, weave all of your skills in. And not only would it be a conversation starter to make things natural, but also you might be surprised what sticks and what skills they really like. So, yes, that is for me. And I'm looking forward to hearing the other presentations as well. Wonderful. Thanks, Danny. That's so amazing that your design is going to be like out there in the world for those earbuds. That's awesome. Congratulations. 
All right, I'm sure you all have questions, but we're gonna move on to the next presentation and we'll get to questions again at the very end. All right, so next up, we're gonna have Patricia. Awesome. Hi everyone, I'm Patricia. Um, I'm also a design major. I'm in my third year. Um, I'm doing product design right now. And I'm also really interested in HCI and physical computing. Um, so I have minors in those. Um, and I'm basically very interested in designing for experiences that bridge the tangible and digital space. Um, so Hasbro was a really interesting experience that gave me the opportunity to do this. Um, and Hasbro, if you don't know, is an entertainment company that involves a lot of toys, game boards, um, and other kind of media assets. Um, and their, their headquarters are located in Rhode Island. Um, but during my internship, which was like last summer, because of COVID-19, um, my internship was remote. Um, so I, I stayed here in Pittsburgh. Um, so if you're really interested in like, like brands like Nerf or GI Joe, Transform uh, Transformers, Monopoly, My Little Pony, things like that. Um, yeah, Hasbro, Hasbro is the company that owns like these brands. So yeah, you should know. Yeah, Hasbro would be the best place for um, you know these kind of entertainment brands. Um, and also, I guess like some recent news um, about the company is that they are now partnered with E1. If people know about this entertainment company, um, which is like E1 is known for their brand Peppa Pig. Um, so yeah, during my internship there, um, I assisted a senior play designer on crafting play experiences for upcoming digital, which is physical and digital toys at um, this kind of innovative lab they call Spark Labs. Um, and this is um, this lab, basically what they do is they kind of seek out new technology and they try to implement that in toys. Um, it's like their innovation center. And um, yeah, it was just really fun experiencing um, like the people in this lab and also all the work that they did in this lab because it was very interdisciplinary. You were working with all sorts of people like the engineers, the sales, and also designers that were kind of only working on specific brands as well. So yeah, all of that was super cool. And uh, just the general like background on how I got this internship was I applied on just their like ge generic career website. Um, I think it was indeed.com, honestly. Um, and that's, I just got an interview after that. And um, after I kind of went through my portfolio, um, I was able to get this internship. I'll definitely go through that more in detail on a later slide, but that was my brief um, history on this internship. Uh, next slide, please. Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry, previous slide. Yes, this slide. Thank you. Um, so for my work at Hasbro, it consisted a lot of idea generating and putting that into um, cohesive presentations to show like leadership and other departments to make into real products. So um, I can't really show any of the work I actually did because um, I had to sign an NDA for that. But this consists of brainstorming with a lot of designers um, on kind of the unique trendy ideas in the current toy space industry, talking with engineers to see what mechanics can be added to the products, um, but that also filled a, fulfilled a cost limit. Um, and also kind of talking with sales to see what timing um, in the year and what strategies were best to sell a certain product. So in this role um, that I interned for, which was like product slash uh, experience designer, it was kind of similar to a product manager um, where you were involved with cross-functional teams and you kind of oversaw the overall process of the product development. Um, so I was mainly a part of two uh, projects uh, during my internship. One was um, with the person that I was shadowing, um, the senior toy designer, um, but another one was a personal project. Um, this personal project could be anything uh, potentially, um, but I decided to do it on Peppa Pig because um, 
as I mentioned previously, uh, it was that year, last year, when Hasbro and E1 um, were, the companies were being combined together. So that allowed a lot of open opportunities for these new brands um, from E1 to develop with Hasbro. Um, and so I decided to, uh, yeah, develop this new toy with Peppa Pig. Uh, I can't show it, but yeah, it was really fun. And final page. Yes, so um, my major takeaways from this internship was definitely don't be afraid to talk to anyone. Um, I think honestly, like every single week I had at least like three coffee chats with people, just any person in the company. It was, it was really wild actually, because I was remote. Um, my way to kind of connect with the, the community in Hasbro was just to, you know, send people emails and try to get these coffee chats. And honestly, I was really surprised that everyone basically said yes. So definitely don't be afraid to talk to anyone, like even senior leadership that you think like you can never talk to the CEO or something like they will definitely give you their time. Like they really want to talk to you. Um, and for my application advice, is I think that when you're applying for um, these internships, uh, it's really important to have um, projects that if you're okay, if you are targeting a specific company that you know they're working in a certain um, space or they have certain um, projects that they really value or they that they do um, to further make yourself more applicable to that job. Um, I think it would be really nice if you had projects that are relevant to the company. Um, so since I was kind of interested in exploring the toy industry during my portfolio review, I decided to talk more in depth about this um, this whale toy that I designed um, during in my one of my courses. And I think this was one of the um, projects that the interviewer really in, were, was interested in um, when I was talking about this. And I think that was a pinnacle point where they decided that I would be a good fit for this role. So yeah, definitely try to align um, what the company values and what they're looking for with some specific uh, project or experience, relevant experience that you have. And yeah, just constantly talk to people and consistently improve your portfolio. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Thanks, Patricia. That sounds like a really fun internship. All right. So next up, we have Karina. Hi, everyone. Um, I am currently a senior business major, and I have two concentrations in business analytics and marketing. Marketing, I pretty much chose because I was like, ooh, it'd be cool to design for like Instagram ads and stuff like that. Um, but there's so much more to that for marketing um, that I didn't even realize. So I added a business analytics concentration on top of that because um, that's what really helps support what businesses, what decisions businesses are trying to make. Um, and today the CPDC asked me to talk about two of my internships. So one of them was at Seagate Technology. That's the one I did virtually this summer. And the next one is Olson's Altman. And I did that in my junior year spring semester. Um, so we can talk about Seagate first, if you wanna go into the next slide. So my official title for Seagate is the IT Enterprise Marketing Analytics Intern. It's a mouthful, but basically what it means was like, I was in charge of more, more of the e-commerce channels. So places like Amazon, where people are buying um, different hard drives because Seagate Technology is a data storage company. And so what I did for that, essentially, I know there's a lot of like buzzwords on this slide, but basically what I did was gather all the data that was coming in through Amazon's like back end vendor site, um, and then trying to figure out what are the different things that change um, the volume of sales that Seagate has. So whether it's price or it's like, oh, is there a discount going on? Or like, why are we running out of stock during our promotions? Um, things like that to try to figure out and get more insights as to how we can improve our sales, basically. Um, so that's what I did. So if we go on to the next slide, 
Um, the things that I used the most at this internship were SQL, Tableau, and Excel. Uh, most of you guys know Excel, but SQL and Tableau, I've actually had to learn at previous classes. Um, so the two classes that I recommend taking, if you like this kind of work, is Modern Data Management, and that's in the Tepper School of Business. And so through that class, I've learned how to use SQL and Tableau. Um, SQL is what you see on the left-hand side, so that's more of like the coding. It looks like it's coding, but it's more like trying to extract um, the data from the different databases, and then you're trying to consolidate them to make it look very, very clear. Um, and then Tableau is basically kind of like a modeling um, PowerPoint kind of thing, so that's what you see on the right. Um, it's basically just creating these models. So these two work hand in hand together. And modern data management is where I learned all the skills that I needed for this company. And then business computing, if you guys have heard of it, um, that's basically just a huge Excel class where they go through all the pivot tables, all the waterfalls, um, and that was very, very helpful for that too. So for Seagate, I didn't really get an interview because I used my network to get this internship. But um, the good thing about the company that I've learned from working there this past summer is that there are a lot of people that are very willing to help you out. Seagate is such a huge company, but it doesn't really feel like a huge company. Um, we had the CEO talk to us a couple times. We had our CMO. Um, so it was really cool to get that stuff. Yeah. Um, the next internship I would like to talk about is Olson Zaltman. And so this is also a different type of marketing. Um, this is more focused on research, but the uh, Olson Zaltman is more of a psychology and consulting company. That's what they label themselves as. It's very, very niche, but I think it's really, really cool. So if you're really interested in kind of researching how people think, um, I think this would be a perfect company. I absolutely loved working here. So essentially what I did was analyze transcripts. So there's a lot of interviewing that goes along with this company. So we would get hired by um, one of the companies I worked for was Pepsi. Um, so we would get hired by Pepsi and then there are some interviewers that go out and then really try to interview what uh, ask people questions about what they think about a certain brand or a product, and then we would analyze these transcripts to try to find uh, insights into how to help the client better present themselves or market themselves. Um, and so I can't really talk too much about the work that I did, but that's essentially what I did. Um, another great thing about this company is there was a mentorship program and they allowed us to write our own articles, so that was really cool. I have never written an article before. I thought it was really scary, um, but it was actually really fun and it was all based on like my idea and then they just helped me shape it and so it's published on their website. So um, that was a really cool learning experience. <laughs> yeah. Next slide. Um, the skills needed for this internship, not really technical. Uh, you just need to be able to think very critically and then know a little bit of PowerPoint, which I'm sure all of you guys know because you guys are all Carnegie Mellon students. Um, a huge class that I think it would be really helpful for this kind of very particular company is business communications. And what I learned in business communications was we had a lot of uh, writing to do, um, different business reports, and we just really had to analyze over and over again to see how we can make it better and how we can make it more concise what we're saying and how we can get the point across. Um, so that's really what you need to know for the company. But they're really learning, looking for people who are very willing to learn. Um, and it's a great company culture. I mentioned access to mentors. Um, I worked for really cool companies. So I worked for Pepsi, I worked for Coke, I worked for the Gates Foundation, stuff like that. So that was a really neat experience. Thank you. Great, thanks Karina. Yeah, of course. And then our last presenter is Roshni. Hi everyone, um, so my name is Roshni. Um, so I wanted to talk about 
my internship experience um, back after my freshman year. So I'm a senior now, so it was kind of a while ago. Um, but I kind of wanted to talk about this because I feel like it was a really cool experience. Um, so to begin with, like it says here, so I'm, I'm a psychology major with a minor in cognitive neuroscience, and I have been I on have the been track, track um, throughout my time. Um, but I'm interested in kind of mental health and social justice and kind of the intersection of those two things. Um, and so Global Wordsmiths um, was actually part of what's called the Pittsburgh Summer Internship Program, which was actually my first, I was part of the first cohort, but since then it's grown a lot. But essentially that program is for Dietrich uh, students to kind of have internships, specifically for freshmen, like the summer after their freshman year. Um, and if anyone is eligible for that, I'd highly recommend looking into it because it's, it was definitely a, a really good experience. Um, so yeah, so I worked at Global Wordsmiths as a program assistant. Um, and so Global Wordsmiths, um, I'd never heard of it until I saw it through the program, but it's a social enterprise based in Pittsburgh. And what a social enterprise is, is that they have, um, they have part of the company that's for profit, and then they use those profits to fund the aspect of the company that are non-profit. So it's kind of like its own way of keeping itself afloat, which is really cool. Um, so specifically their goal is to provide free translation and interpretation services to refugees and immigrants in Western Pennsylvania. Um, you can go on to the next slide. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so more about my role. Um, so I was a program assistant. So because the company itself is quite small, right off the bat, they kind of said, okay, because we're small, we're going to give you a lot of responsibility, which was kind of scary at first, but it was also really cool to see, especially as someone, you know, just coming out freshman year, you don't really think you're going to be able to do as much contributing to a company. Um, but basically on day one, my supervisor was like, okay, have you ever written a grant before? And I was like, I don't even know what a grant really is, you know? And so on day one, they kind of told me, okay, we're going to need you to start writing a grant, submit a proposal. And so that obviously was research on how to even write that. And also it was just a really good way to kind of get started, um, you know, going straight into the field, writing, doing research into the work they do. Um, and so that, that skill itself has also been able to kind of apply to other things. So like if you're into research, you always need to know how to do that. And other aspects of your career, I'm sure that grants will kind of, unfortunately have to be a thing because they're, they're very important. Um, but I think one thing that was really cool about this program was that it was very kind of autonomous. They said, okay, this is your role in the program um, and you can kind of do whatever you want with it. So myself and the other program assistant decided to kind of showcase other either nonprofits in Pittsburgh or kind of other organizations that do similar things towards you know social justice um, and so we kind of did something similar to Humans of New York so we went around and did a lot of outreach and met with different people of uh, parts of nonprofits and other organizations and it was a really cool th way to kind of just get to know the organizations in Pittsburgh that are doing some really cool things um, so I'd say that aspect of it the communications aspect and the networking aspect is really really helpful and interesting um, and honestly, this internship kind of made me realize just within Pittsburgh itself, how large the refugee community is. And I had no idea until working there. And honestly, that internship kind of made me want to work more with refugee communities in the future, which is why I really appreciate that internship. And another thing as well, the reason I wanted to talk about this is because since I am, you know, more science, like psychology and neuroscience and pre-med, I had initially just thought, okay, I'll just do research that summer. Um, you know, kind of, that's like kind of what people tend to think as a pre-med, but when I saw this opportunity, my love for language, as well as, you know, social justice, I thought it'd be a really co good combination. And so not only did it open my eyes to other things, but it also made me realize that, you know, I, I could combine my love for mental health with, you know, other populations and kind of make it more intersectional. So I really enjoyed that. And so on the right, there's a picture of us working at the Global, Global Wordsmiths office, which is called Ascender. It's um, kind of in uh, near Bakery Square. And what was really cool about that office is it's a shared office space with loads of other different startups, nonprofits, kind of really cool cutting edge organizations. So not only did we get to kind of get to know the other interns in that office, but kind of get to network with other companies and organizations. I mean, obviously now with COVID that obviously with a virtual environment would be kind of different, but that was kind of something I just wanted to point out that I thought was really cool. Um, and I know I kind of forgot to add more a, a slide about this, but kind of more advice side of things. So the way obviously I found out about this internship was through the Pittsburgh Summit Internship Program. But one thing I would say is that there are people that CMU, like your mentors, your professors, they have so many connections as well. So if you can network within CMU as well, that really is helpful because even after this internship, I 
spoke to Ayanna Ledford, who's the director of diversity and inclusion. And I asked her like, do you, do you know of any places, you know, that would have internships? And then that's when she, the next summer gave me a connection at the Women's Law Project, which is an organization that specifically does uh, women's and LGBTQ plus rights cases like pro bono. And so that was another, another really incredible experience to have. So I'd say, as, as everyone else has kind of mentioned, networking is important, but even within CMU, there are so many resources. And I think that that really helped me. Um, and interview wise, this specific company, again, because it's a much smaller company, I kind of just went, it was an in-person interview and it was kind of mm -hmm. it was basically they asked me like, why would you, what do you have, you know, to be able to work in this sector? It's a very broad sector, nonprofit social enterprise. And it was interesting then that I was able to apply like my previous experience in like research, more science-based research. And that's where I said, okay, then I could be able to hopefully able to pick up things like grant writing other things like that. So I think as other people have mentioned, like your skills don't necessarily have to be aligned with the company that you're looking towards, as long as you can kind of apply them and show them how you can apply them. I think people are really impressed by that because it shows that you're more flexible and you can see things in different perspectives. Um, so that's basically everything. But uh, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you so much. And I, I don't know if we did this intentionally, but I love that we had two panelists talking about experiences and large companies where their work might be visible and in the hands of millions of people. And then, you know, two panelists talking about really meaningful internship opportunities at these smaller companies here in Pittsburgh, where they were given lots of responsibility and able to take on, you know, more work than they even maybe thought that they would have been able to. So you can see there's advantages to both. And, you know, I want to save some time for our for questions from our participants. So, um, Anne-Marie, do we have anything um, in the chat? Not yet. So I encourage all of you who have been listening to these really, really interesting presentations um, to think of your questions, pop them in the chat. Um, I'm happy to read them and uh, we can direct them to one in particular, or you can just ask a general question if you have one. Yeah, and we are a smaller group today. So if you want to just unmute and ask a question, I think that's fine too. Um, and while we're waiting for you all to come up with questions, um, I'm going to ask one. Um, being that I'm a career consultant, when I heard um, Karina mention that she used her network to get her internship at Seagate, you know, my ears like perked up. So Karina, I was wondering if you could talk more about like what that networking process looks like. And if any of our other panelists um, had an experience with networking that helped you to get an internship. We'd love to hear about that as well. Yeah, sure. Um, so for the one at Seagate, I actually had summer plans that fell through because of COVID. So I actually had to ask my dad to um, send out my resume to a couple of his colleagues and see where that took me. Um, I think in the beginning, I was really embarrassed to use like my parents network just because I don't know for me it's more I guess it's a little bit of a pride thing and it's also like I never wanted anything handed to me um, but looking back on it I feel like networking is just really the way to go because you can have so many skills under your belt but if someone at a company um, that you're looking at going towards if they know someone else that they have a relationship with they're more likely to trust that person so that's ultimately who they pick um, so it's something that i used to be ashamed about but now I'm, I'm just kind of like okay that's it's really dumb to think that way um so if you can use your network even if it's your parents or your friends like i highly recommend using it um, for olsen zaltman i saw that they had a job posting on Handshake, and I didn't know about the company at all, but they said they were a marketing research and consulting company. Um, and I was like, hey, what is that? So I looked on their website and they had all the emails to basically everyone that worked at the company. So I just randomly hit one of them up and I was like, hi, like I'm a junior at Carnegie Mellon and I'm studying marketing and I looked at this internship program and it seems interesting but I also don't know what you guys do um, so would you be willing to like have a chat with me and so there was someone there at the company and this is what really helps with smaller companies too they're more willing to actually like sit down and chat with you so we actually met in um, downtown Pittsburgh for like a Starbucks chat for about an hour and so 
um, she was like, oh yeah, you seem like a really cool person, so I'll refer you to um, the person that's hiring interns, and that's basically how I got it. Love it. Two different ways. <laughs> so with Olson Zeltman, you really just like did a cold message and kind of crossed your fingers and, and you got a really amazing experience out of it. Oh yeah, it's very, very intimidating to do it, but I feel like the more that you put yourself out there, the easier it becomes. Um, because the worst thing that they can do is just not reply to you or they're just like, oh, sorry, like I can't do that for you. Exactly. So. Yeah, that's what I tell students all the time. The, the worst case scenario is you've got a no thanks or you don't hear anything. So definitely worth a try. Um, and I, I'm really, I'm kind of surprised um, that our first two panelists didn't use networking in some way. Although I'm also not surprised because our design students are so incredibly talented. But when you're applying to these big companies like Bose and Hasbro that probably have, you know, hundreds of applications for each internship position, I'm just curious what you guys think um, or what you did to really stand out and to kind of cut through all of the noise when you were applying or going through the interview process. Um, are, are there other tips that you might be able to offer to students who really want to, you know, get an internship at, at a big company like like that? Yeah, so um, I can talk about a little bit about my experience at Hasbro. So. I think um, one thing that I mentioned was like the the specific project that I think um, that I did, like the whale project, the interactive little creature, um, just really resonated with my interviewer. Um, I think she really, really enjoyed that project. And we kind of just went on a tangent talking about, you know, like, pro like projects that she did that were kind of similar to what I did and um, we just had a really good conversation. So, um, Project wise, that's one thing I would definitely recommend students to, you know, look out for if you are interested in a specific company and you know they they do medical equipment, then maybe you should do more projects that are related to medical equipment. Um, that's just like a it's like an easier way to allow, um, you know, your interviewers to realize that like, oh, you know, your projects can directly apply to what our company needs. Um, another tip I would add on to that is that uh, when you're talking to your interviewer. Um, it's like really easy to be really nervous and you kind of get stiff and, you know, when you're talking, it's, it's just not as um, casual and it doesn't lead to as interesting conversations, I feel like sometimes um, when I'm talking to other people about it. So I would really try to like force yourself to imagine the interviewer just as your friend or like just someone who is really curious about your work and just talk to them just very casually, um, obviously not like your closest best friend, but um, allow yourself to kind of let go and kind of show your personality and show your passion when you're talking about your projects. I think that's what, that's like a, one thing that's very attractive to um, people who are trying to hire these students. They're looking for like, you know, who are you, who is this person and what you're really interested in um, and what you're showing passion for, so yeah. Great. Yeah. And one thing I would love to echo everything you just said, and another tip that I would add on to that is I mentioned research and researching the company. And when you're going for a big company, a lot of people apply. And when they ask, oh, do you have any questions or things like that? Like they know that most people are applying because of the name. You might know the name. And what I did is I found examples of projects that they that really resonated with me. And like, those are the projects and the products that they created, which has made me want to apply, but bring those up as Patricia was saying, like have a casual interview, but bring up your relevant projects and their projects and say, you know, your work here was really fascinating to me because, and be honest about it, obviously, they can tell when you're being genuine and when you're just reading off of a script, but having specific work that they have done and then applying that to your work and saying that reminds me of when I did this can really make you stand out like as, oh, they're interested in what we do as a company and not just because we have this name. Mm, that's a great tip. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna ask sort of a more um, practical question. You know, a couple of you spoke about um, not being able to talk specifically about the work that you did for your companies. Um, and I'm assuming that that's probably because you were under what we 
um, what's known as an NDA or a non-disclosure agreement. Um, for those of you who did sign one of those NDAs, could you talk a little bit more about what that might mean and you know, why students probably shouldn't be too afraid of, of signing something like that? Yeah, I can go first. Um, so I did have to sign an NDA. Um, and I think that was because Hasbro, you know, works with a lot of different brands, um, like with other like major companies, um, like Disney as well. So they are quite um, like serious on not wanting to spread any like of these like ideas that are going on in the company outside because um, yeah, that would affect a lot of like their competitors and um, yeah, people just, yeah, they're just like these ideas are very important to the, comp to the company itself and they wanna keep it inside the company. Um, but it's really nothing to be too scared about. Uh, you basically like sign an agreement just saying that, you know, after you work here, um, you're not supposed to share um, any of the ideas that you, you know, conduct, like you uh, talked about or that you created um, during this internship to anyone else, meaning that like uh, you can't talk to people about it, you can't put it on your portfolio. Um, and yeah, just just something that it's like you kept your kept to yourself um but that doesn't mean that you can't talk to people about your experience in general like i can still come to this internship showcase and talk to you guys about you know what i did broadly there like oh i i talked to a lot of people there um that are working in different disciplines or like i worked on this a toy project um that's related to this brand, but I can't talk about what specifically the, the toy or the product is, but I can mention that it was for this brand or, um, you know, these are some general things that I did. So, yeah, I think um, like if there's a internship that makes like has to have you sign an NDA, um, definitely don't be afraid of that. Um, I think it's, it's something that a lot of companies uh, require. Um, especially for companies that have, are just like working with a lot of brands um, in general. So, yeah. All right. Thanks, Patricia. That was super helpful. And we did get a question in our chat. So I'm going to direct this one to you, Rosh. Um, so this, we, we've got a question and it's, when is the best time to think about getting an internship? So for instance, as a first year, if you don't have many experiences under your belt, you know, how could that potentially affect your your chances of getting an internship or the internship process? And I think this is a common question. If I don't have experience, how do I get experience? Yeah, for sure. I'd say kind of like what I was mentioning before, obviously like you, like you mentioned in, the, in your question, um, after your freshman year, you obviously don't have as much experience. So I'd say looking towards like more, like the smaller companies, um, that definitely gives you a leg up, I think, because obviously like everyone else was mentioning, the larger companies, you need some like more project under your belt. And I think, the smaller companies also need the help as well. So definitely looking towards smaller companies. And of course you kind of think, oh, like that's probably not as good, but I honestly can't stress like how important my internship was at Global Wordsmiths. It's a very small company, but the skills I learned there and the responsibility I was given just as, again, just after having not much experience was so valuable. And, and I still to this day, I talked to the people from the internship. In fact, I'm meeting with one of them for like a virtual coffee next week. And they still are really valuable in networking as well because of all the nonprofits I spoke to and everything through that. So I'd say like, don't, I know it's hard sometimes to think, but try not to think so much, oh, I need a big company name or like a, a famous company's name because honestly, the smaller companies, especially when you have less experience, give you so much more responsibility that you can then, it's like a stepping stone, right? You can go from somewhere else from that with that, with those skills that you've learned. So I honestly don't think you, you can't, there's no point in thinking, oh, I'm a freshman, I won't get an internship. Like you definitely will with the smaller companies as well. And I'm not saying you wouldn't be able to at a bigger company either, either, but I'm just saying that the chances are probably higher at the smaller companies and they really are very valuable. Great, thank you. And I know you already gave a plug to the Dietrich Pitch, Pittsburgh Summer Internship Program, but I'll give another one because if you are a Dietrich student, that program is really meant to support students who have not had an internship experience yet. All right, we have time for maybe one more question. Does anybody want to chime in or any any final thoughts? Can I add to the last question? 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, so also another thing, when I was a freshman, like I didn't think I wanted an internship because I had an internship coming out of high school and I was like, this is the only summer that I get off since like my fifth grade year, basically. Um, so you can also do different things that are not necessarily quote unquote an internship, but like make those opportunities work for you. Um, so that summer I went back home and I actually taught at a after school care program. And um, it started just as like teaching a couple of classes like English and math and stuff like that. And then I looked online and I was like, hey, you guys don't have a website. Um, have you guys ever thought about making one? And they were like, you know, we never thought about that. Can you make us a website? And so like from there, like I would help make their website and their marketing materials. Um, so it's not labeled as an internship, but I did so much work for the company. Um, and that's a really, really good way to, so it doesn't al always have to be under an official title. That's a fantastic point. And, and, you know, in fact, this summer with COVID and everything, we had a lot of students, not just first years who weren't able to get an internship. And um, the CPDC put together a handout of, you know, ideas for how to make the most of your summer. And there are lots of experiences that you can have that aren't technically internships, but that can help you build skills, that can help you build your network. Um, and so, you know, we'd be happy to help you with um, some of those ideas in addition to helping you to get an internship. All right, any final questions? All right, well, I thought this was a really fantastic discussion. I know that I learned a lot, so I wanna thank all of our panelists, Karina, Patricia, Roshni, Danny, thank you so much for sharing your experiences and for answering our questions. Um, everybody who came, um, thanks for coming and spending some time this afternoon um, learning about internship opportunities in the, in the design space. And um, the CPDC is here to help. So we hope to meet more of you um, in an appointment or to see you back on campus someday soon. I'm knocking on my giant wooden table. Thanks again for coming everyone.